then when you arrive to the um, to the site and as you can see here, you have to uh, take into account everything, like how many people are there with you, if you have a safe area for them. Uh, how does your primary landing area look like? What's the emergency landing area? Where is your base station? Where will you be staying, sending in order to have the UAV always in the light of sight? Um, what's your secure operational area? And all take, it's all taking into account your area of interest that you maybe have to adjust in your flight planning software, but we need to have some um, changes based on the wind direction or based on the local circumstances. The checklists, it, this is also an, uh, a feature that is, uh, is required by law. Part 107 says that the remote pilot in command is required to develop a preferred checklist if the manufacturer has not developed one. And here you have a link to the great document uh, by NCDOT uh, UAS section. It is a Word document that uh, is an UAS operational procedures guide that will tell you in details what is the device or the law in North Carolina about operating drones, about performing a flight, and it will also give you the sample of the checklist that you can develop and will outline the emergency procedures. And you can access it, uh, download it clicking on this link. And this is the, um, the sample checklist from this document. Uh, the checklist is usually uh, integrated into the flight software, but some of the software is not uh, specific to the certain manufacturer or the certain model. And this is the case when you have to develop uh, your own checklist or get it from the manufacturer's website in different form. But sometimes if you go, if you go through the flight planning software, the checklist will just like pop up and you don't uh, have to develop it. Of course, you need to go through it each time. Yes, here is what I said before that it, if you don't have it, you have to develop it uh, on based on the available data and based you on your experience. The last part of the flight planning process is the flight control. You may think it's what does it have to do that with the flight planning? Of course, it's not that you're going to plan that you're going to control everything. It's just um, you, the flight control should be uh, should be easy if the, you will launch, operate, and recover from the preset locations, and we will be just flying according to the mission plan. But things happen, and you need to plan for your reaction to the things that can happen. So each. Each, uh, each time, all the time, even for one second, that's the law. You have to always have a clear view of the aircraft, uh, the visual light of sight. Uh, if you, um, there, um, we mentioned the waivers, how and when you would be able to go beyond the visual light of sight, but this is not our case, and this is not the case of a vast majority of the uh, users of uh, the UAS. Um, so the, all, the flight plan should be designed this way that you will never lose your UAS from the site and it should be adjusted also to the visibility that you will find being in the site. Uh, so the communication between visual observer, if it's used, and the pilot needs to be uh, uh, remained all the time. You can't find, you can't lose the control over the position and the condition of the your UAS right now. Uh, also, the emergency uh, procedure. You need to know um, each UAS is different. Each uh, software is different. You can get error during the flight. If you're not prepared what to do when this error appears, or if there is a failure of, of any kind, or if there is an emergency even on the ground, and you are not prepared for it beforehand, you might not react properly. It will, can end with, um, with uh, lowering the safety of the people or even to the loss of the UAS. 
So we need to know the recovery locations and how to use the built-in fail-safe features to recover the aircraft. Uh, now we move into our test site. So this is where we're going to be flying next week. This is uh, the, the yellow line shows the border of the COA, so the certificate of authorization that was obtained by NGAT. Uh, and this is in Raleigh, south from the campus. If you want to find it on Google, you can just uh, type Lake Wheeler Road. This is Lake Wheeler Road. And this is Tryon Road here. Tryon is more, maybe more recognizable here. And there are multiple parts and multiple takeoff locations that uh, are that were established by NGAT. Here it is. Uh, the, this uh, squares are the takeoff locations that were found to be just working for them. And you will have during the assignment, you will have uh, data from Seacrest area and you will have the data from Mid Pines area. So you can decide where you want to de develop your uh, flight plan. Uh, the, f the area where you usually fly is uh, the, the, the time series of data is uh, right now almost, I uh, think, three years long. It's here, the Mid Pines area. Here is a takeoff location and a square about like this big. Uh, so this is the view from, uh, from Google and a little bit lower, you can see here uh, the, the Raleigh. So this is the part uh, that is owned by mostly by NC State and there is little uh, buildings and that uh, this is outside of the urban development because it's the watershed protected area. So it's why we're able to fly even in the middle of the city, like cities all around. And this is the same area, uh, I mean, the scale is different. This is just a screenshot from Raleigh area in um, from the charts that I have been shown to you last uh, lecture. This is Raleigh, this is RDU, and here you have, I outlined, where is the COA, where is Lake Wheeler? So this is us, uh, it's, uh, yeah, this is like the, uh, the pink area here is the whole uh, COA. Now we move into the flight planning. So first, you have to choose a software. We are limited because the UX5, the fixed wind dark we flying, is working only with one kind of software. The Trimble develops the UAS, the Trimble develops the software that it, uh, it co cooperates with. But if you will be using a different type of platform, uh, there are also different platforms that can um, work with your UAS. And some, just like the Trimble, here you have, are uh, specific for the UAS. If you buy something made by SenseFly, any SenseFly UAS like EB, you will use a motion for flight planning and for flight uh, monitoring. If you're having DJI, so Phantom or Mavic or Spark, there are multiple, multiple platforms because DJI is right now the main manufacturer of the consumer grade little small UAS. So there is market for apps as well. You have here a link to uh, two most popular, I, I would say. Um, this is the ground station and the Litchi, and also you have different manufacturers like Micro Drones and uh, Unique, and this is uh, this is their own ways, uh, their own developed software for flight. Here you see the link for uh, DGS Grand, uh, Grand Station Pro and the Litchi software. Yeah. Um, that's also designed for uh, the DJI products. But you will see later how uh, they all, the mapping software, they're all based on the same principles of establishing the map mapping area, like the polygon uh, that of the area that you want to map. You also have some more univer universal platforms that can work with variety. Uh, of UAS and this is uh, the professional kind is called UGCS and uh, it has you can subscribe for multiple uh, multiple levels 
this is something that a lot of professionals would use. It also has the capability of working with multiple platforms of going beyond the light of sight operations. Uh, and you can have here, you can see the options uh, based on pricing and features. There is also an, an open source mission planner, so you don't have to pay anything for it, but it cooperates with the autopilot that is used mostly for the uh, drones that you build yourself. But there are options. You don't have to stick only to the uh, Trimble Aerial Imaging uh, that we are using because it works only with the Trimble uh, platform. But you will learn the principles that will be there for each uh, planning, uh, flight planning software. So this is a Trimble Aerial Imaging window and uh, you will see it, uh, it's easy to follow. There are multiple instructor, instructional movies, um, how to, um, you will follow them during the assignment. I just want to quickly say, uh, show like how you create a plan and how does it look like in our, with our data. So this is the COA that you can uh, download there and our ground control points also established uh, there and how you can create by like polygon. Each polygon can be either at avoidance zone or the zone that you def your flying zone. So this is like where you wanna fly and this is the area you wanna avoid. And then the software will calculate based on your geometrical parameters like side overlap and, uh, um, uh, and forward overlap. We will create the flight lines and will grant sampling dif di distance will uh, determine your flying altitude based on also the camera parameters. And you can change the direction of your flight. And we'll have to, uh, what you have to do manually is establish where is your takeoff location and what, what's the direction of your takeoff and when is your landing location. You also have the alternative landing options. And then you can run a simulation of your flight. And uh, I, I just saying the simulation would just take as long as the flight. So you may have to wait through that. Um, and uh, during the simulation, uh, during the actual flight, it will show you what is visible during the actual flight, like your battery life, the, the uh, horizon, like the uh, artificial horizon. Uh, well, what kind of uh, parameters that it, does it measure? How many pictures it has taken? And uh, this is also what the Trimble Aerial Imaging on the tablet shows you. This is what I mentioned before, the manufacturer developed checklist. So I'm just gonna go sc scroll through it all. Uh, so you will see what is required that the software will tell you exactly what to do on the field. You have to connect the modem and all the uh, other features uh, uh, um, that are necessary with that, like check the antenna, check the USB connection. Then just connecting the battery Then you're preparing the camera, cleaning camera lens and filter, something that I would probably forget about, but uh, you want to have it clear of dust because then you go into the field, you take all these pictures and then you have the dust or some stain on each one of them. And uh, then how you insert the camera, checking the camera trigger, uh, insert the tracker if, uh, if you need it, um, close the payload bay and you have like each step what you do and in which uh, what what has to be checked uh, before each flight, and how you set up the launcher, and uh, how you connect. First, you need to in, um, insert the safety pin, and then how you place the rover on the launcher. How you um, make uh, make the make it work. How do you position the propellers? and then tighten the, the cord elastics in order to deploy. Um, verify again the position and uh, remove the safety, safety pin that will allow you to 
arm the system and fly. So this is also the screenshot. How does it look like when you are observing the flight from your tablet, from your device? It's also, uh, it's also important to note that if you're holding the device and looking at your flight parameters, you're not observing, observing the UAS at this moment. So it is basically necessary to have two people, someone that is looking constantly at the UAS uh, it's someone that is controlling the flight parameters on the ground control station. So what we have learned today, uh, we learned how, what are the phases of UAS flight planning. We know the safety procedures and checklists uh, that are necessary for safe flight operations. And we know how to plan a flight in the Trimble Aerial Imaging software.